Hello, everyone. Good afternoon and welcome to our um, webinar on downsizing. And um, I'm Heather Fire, one of the senior living specialists here at St. Camillus. And um, we are excited to present to you. Um, we have some exciting guests and we hopefully can lay out some points that can be helpful as you um, start to think about downsizing or moving from your house to um, a, you know, a senior life plan community like ours. Um, we have our first guest. Her name is Melinda Stewart, and she um, is the owner of Smart Moves, um, and we highly recommend them. Um, all of the time. She um, has a passion working with people. She's a certified senior moving manager and she's the owner of Smart Moves. Um, she likes to work with clients. She likes to hear about their life stories as they prepare for the next chapter. She um, specializes in assisting clients and their families with the downsizing process. Um, she can help relocate. She can help the resettling. She pretty much does it all, Smart Moves does it all. And um, she loves presenting, she can be heard on local radio shows, she gives seminars around the town. So I am very excited to have her here with us. So we will hear from her in just a minute. And then another exciting couple we have are Sally and Mike, and they are here for um, about their residence here at St. Camillus. And they've been mm -hmm. here for about a year and a half, year, 14 months, maybe 12 to 14 months. And yeah. they um, have some great tips as well. They moved from a rather large home and they had to downsize quite a bit and move into um, our apartments here. And um, they're gonna give you a little bit of suggestions and, and tips too. So um, again, my name is Heather Beyer and um, I'll be the host today. And if you have any questions, please kind of just, you can contact us and I'll get them out and read them out loud. Um, and we'll kind of start with that. So our first speaker, Melinda, like I said, is the owner of Smart Moves and she will be um, um, presenting to us and hopefully getting us some tips. Welcome, Melinda. Thank you, Heather. I'm gonna switch over here and pull up the slides for us. Okay, hopefully everyone can see the slides. And I'm so happy to be here with everyone today. I love getting to share information and I look forward to any questions you might have. So today we're gonna to talk about making a smart move together. And to start out, um, we've been doing this, we're in our 18th year and we've heard lots of um, thoughts and feelings from our clients about the idea of downsizing and moving. So sometimes clients are excited, especially when they're moving to a wonderful uh, community like St. Camillus. Um, and other times people are having some more reluctance and apprehension about the move. But really overall, moving is considered one of the top five most stressful experiences in our life. So we know that it comes with a lot of um, stress and feelings of being overwhelmed and emotional for majority of people. So that's really what we're here for is to help um, make that process as easy as possible. At Senior um, Smart Moves, we, we are certified senior move managers and um, that's our specialty. There's a handful of companies like ours in the area and we all really try to focus on helping address the physical and emotional aspects of making a move. So uh, when you call Smart Moves, it really starts with a phone call. And then typically we do an um, in-person consultation. If um, you prefer, we also do offer virtual consults now. So we can do that over Zoom or FaceTime or Skype, um, whatever works for you. Or we, we can come to your home and we wear a mask and take safety precautions to meet that way usually takes about 60 minutes and the point of the consult is to um, talk together, assess the scope of your job and what things you're looking for help with and then we really work together as partners to develop a game plan and then Smart Moves will put together a recommendation plan and an estimate for you and if needed we can help coordinate with all the other partners that are part of your move, the realtor, if you have a stager, your new community, 
um, and then any type of estate sale or estate settlement clear out service as well. So we can become uh, the, the general manager for your whole move process if needed. Um, so for most of our clients, the, the action plans vary. Everyone's move is different and everyone has different variables that are part of their move. So this is just a sample of what a, a move plan might look like. Uh, oftentimes clients ask for extra help before the move with sorting, um, downsizing, figuring out what to do with their things, and sometimes even some prepacking if it's a large move, like it sounds like Sally and Mike had. Um, and then we can also do what we call real estate readiness, where we can clean and prepare your house for those um, pictures that need to be taken or for showings of the house so that everything looks ready to go and you can get the top price for your sale. And then the, the main event is the big pack, which happens the day before your move, where the majority of your things will be packed up at that time. And then the next day we move everything over, um, possibly to St. Camilla's, and set up the new space. So by the end of that second day, um, the boxes are out of your way, pictures can be on the wall, your bed will be made, and you can start meeting your new neighbors and um, check out the new community. And then um, in addition, some clients also ask us to help with the final clear out of their former residence and um, cleaning if needed. So it's, it's up to you which of those services you need. We're here, we're here to help whatever makes the most sense. So with all of us being at home a little more than we were before, downsizing has become a fun activity <laughs> for many people to do. So here's, <laughs> here's a few downsizing tips to get started. One, we always recommend starting with that game plan. Um, just to have a, a goal of where you're going and an order to do things in, we find that's really, really helpful. Otherwise, sometimes we jump in and, and almost start spinning our wheels, focusing our energy and, and kind of getting distracted by different things. And then we feel like we've done a lot of work and not a lot has actually gotten done. So if we can come together and help set up that game plan, that can really help. Another tip that's really helpful is to start with areas in your home that are less sentimental. So if there's something that's just really hard to make decisions on, put that off for later and start with something easy. For, for some people, maybe it's looking through medications. We don't usually get too emotionally attached to our medications, so we can go through, look through the ones that we don't use anymore and um, come up with a plan for that. And um, maybe it's canned food, another thing, not too emotional. <laughs> whatever, whatever is a good starting point. Mm -hmm. And what we find is when we get started, that builds momentum. And then by the time we make it to those more sentimental value items, it, it becomes a little easier because we've already built up a lot of good practice on the, the easier items. I also recommend not spending too much time every day where you get burned out because then the next day you won't feel like doing it anymore. So we recommend starting even with 15 minutes and set a timer and then if you want to keep going, say no, <laughs> stop then so that you're excited to start the next day. Um, another great tip, before you even start going through things or thinking about what you want, might want to take to your new space is just sit down and write a list of what's most important to you. That's really helpful for us too when we come for that consult because then we can really plan around those items and we know that that's a priority and we want to work those in whenever possible. So without doing a walkthrough of your house and looking at everything, just think off the top of your head. What makes me really happy? Is it the blanket my mother made for me when I was a child and it has a lot of memories? Is it my favorite coffee cup that I look forward to using every morning? Whatever those top 10 things are, jot them down and we'll, we'll work around that. Um, another very helpful thing is to think about what will fit in your new space. So this slide has a example of a floor plan with dimensions on it. When we work together, we'll measure your furniture and lay it out within that floor plan so you know exactly how things are gonna fit and we'll put it all to scale and we can work together on the layout and design. And you can, you can do that on your own too if you want. It's kind of a fun, fun part of the process. 
the next tip listed here is taping off your closet size, um, either on your floor or within your closet to really see how much space you'll have in your new living space. So if you have 10 closets in your current home and you're gonna have five closets or four closets in your new space, to kind of mark that off so you can really visually see how much room you're gonna have for your hanging things. You, a typical closet in a senior living um, community is about six feet usually, so you can kind of use that as a guide. And then finally, we like to ask these questions and the order of these questions is really important. So you start with, do I even like this? You know, pick up whatever you're looking at, maybe it's some dishes or a vase, do I even still like this? Okay, if you can answer yes, then you say, do I still use it? And the last question is, do I have room for it? Sometimes we tend to ask those questions in the reverse order and we wanna just fill up the space and then think about those other questions, but it's almost like taking along your ex, your ex-boyfriend or girlfriend. <laughs> you know, why, why take them with you? There might be room, but if you no longer like them or have a use for it, it's, it's just gonna be taking up space. So. Um, ask those other questions first. And start, start today, start right after the webinar. Never too soon to start. So um, just, to, just to interrupt you for one mm -hmm. second, Melinda, those are great, um, great tips. So a question did just come in from great. Carol and she, so you just touched on it a little bit, but it said her question was, should I try to sell things on Craigslist before the move or after the move? So um, it sounds like from your tips, you know, that could fall under the category of, do I need to take it with me or not? Right, right. So that's, we'll kind of talk about that later in the presentation, oh, but good. the more you can sort ahead of time, the happier you'll be when you make the move. The, the easier it is to make the move when you've made a lot of those decisions ahead of time. And we'll talk about some other options besides Craigslist coming up here. Perfect. Um, but let me know when questions come in, that's great. So we'll, we'll just go through a couple slides here for examples of thinking through what to keep, what not to keep. Um, so we've got a picture here with some furniture and it represents different styles of furniture, right? The one on the left is a little more traditional, a lot bigger um, and a, a darker style. This is something that less people are using these days. So sometimes it can be a little harder to try to sell or to fit into a smaller space. So um, there are sometimes options, especially if it's a certain brand or a um, certain designer Sometimes we can look at consignment for those items, but otherwise, if you can find some place for donation or a family member's interested or even the buyer of the home, those are great options. The piece on the right is smaller, may fit in your new apartment if you still love it. If you're done with a piece like that, that's what we call a mid-century modern piece and those types of furniture are very big sellers right now. So. Um, you know, when we come through your house and you kind of let us know what you want to keep and what you're ready to get rid of, we can help find the best place for you to look at um, possibly selling those items if that's what you're looking at. And the doing that scale floor plan will really help too because you'll know how things might fit in your new space. One more um, question, Melinda, oh, that just mm -hmm. came in after that quick. Um, sure about the donation so lisa typed in are places like goodwill taking donations do you know if they are accepting donations right now yes donations yes, have opened up again okay. and different places so even goodwill depending on um, which goodwill you're going to is accepting different things so our recommendation right now is call first and check because it's changing day to day some of the um like uh, St. Vincent here is asking if you have a bigger do donation to call and make an appointment. Some have different hours right now. Um, if we're working together with you, we'll, we'll call and, and get all that information together for you, depending on what you have to donate. So call first, but yes, places are accepting donations again with some restrictions, um, depending on which place it is. 
That's great. Good to know for me too, personally. <laughs> yeah, it, it is. It's, it's very nice because when they were closed, there was no place to go. So we're happy that they're operating again. Um, so next slide was one of those less sentimental areas I talked about, medications um, and medical equipment. So this is a good thing that can be a rainy day project is to go through the medications you have. Anything expired, we really encourage you to let go of. Um, and the important thing with this is, um, so let go, don't keep it, don't, don't donate it, don't sell it, then we'll be moving you somewhere else less nice like jail <laughs> for trying to sell your medication um, and so we do want to discard it but it's really important to do that safely we don't want to dump it down um, you know they used to say to flush it down the toilet that's not so good it enters chemicals and things into our water stream that we don't want and we don't want to really put it in the garbage because somebody might get into that and it could cause problems either people or animals can get into the garbage so we want to usually take it to a local police station. Um, sometimes a pharmacy, Walgreens or CVS will take it as well, or there's mail-in programs so that it can be disposed of safely. And we can help you with that if needed. Clothing is another great area to sort through if you are in the mood. And we usually recommend if you haven't used it in the last six months, you're probably not gonna use it unless you're saving it for that final occasion, which sometimes we have that one piece in the closet. Um, but in general, clothing is a great thing that can be donated as long as it's still in good shape. Somebody can get good use out of that if you're not using it anymore. And some places will take it even if it is worn or torn because they'll recycle that and use it for things like insulation or making rags for different things. So um, that's another question when you're gonna donate if they'll take things even if they're worn or torn. And then the picture on the right represents maybe some more vintage type items. Those there is a market for, so we can help you find somebody that would be willing to pay you for that and, and sell them if you have some nice vintage items. If you have things like old um, service uniforms, sometimes museums are looking for that for donate and sometimes those can be sold as well. All right, next slide. These are some of our favorite collections. We've got a Hummel, some China sets, a Christmas village. We see a lot of these and um, they've brought lots of joy to people over the years. However, if you are done with them, they are not big selling items generally uh, because the market's pretty flooded. So this is something where we try to think creatively. My um, grandmother was a collector of Hummels and when she made her uh, downsizing move, she gave each grandchild a Hummel that um, specifically reminded her of, of us. So instead of getting a collection of hundreds of Hummels, I have one that she thought was like me and one that she thought was like my husband. And then those are special to me, but I would have been a little at a loss of where to go with boxes and boxes of them. So that was a nice option. That is a good idea. Um, some people use China to make new art pieces or mosaics. So you can always come up with creative ideas. Sometimes our clients, if you have China sets that are dishwasher safe, decide to use them every day and just have fancy meals every day and really get to enjoy those pieces. If you wanna take your hand wash set, you can do that too. It's just a lot more work. Um, otherwise, if you have a certain set, some collections, are valuable. We always can bring in our um, member from our team that does appraisals and he can let you know if, if you have a set that does have value. But most often they're going to be donate or share with anyone who might be interested. Great. Okay, another, another area for downsizing pictures. This can be one of those areas that can be more challenging, sometimes a little more sentimental or emotional. Not for everyone, but it, it can be. And pictures really can't um, be recycled. So that's something to know. There's usually, especially older pictures, have chemicals on them that can't go in recycling. So if you decide you're done with them, they actually need to be thrown away. If you have old historical pictures, sometimes those can be sold or donated to like a historical museum. 
But if they're pictures that you just have big collections of, we always suggest have um, family come together if possible, when we can see each other face to face, or maybe you'll do it over a Zoom and talk about the pictures, see who has favorites, share them with those who wanna take them and select the ones you wanna keep, and then um, maybe downsize or get rid of the ones that nobody remembers who's in them or the head's cut off or it's blurry. <laughs> um, those, those are easy to let go. There are some great companies. We work a lot with Pixology in the area and they can condense your pictures into a much smaller format, either technology wise or they um, put them in chronological order for you and put them in um, storage photo safe boxes in a much more condensed way. So that's an option too. Or if you want to take them all, we had one client use their second bedroom in their apartment just for storing photos. So if that's what you choose to do, <laughs> that's a, always an option. But usually we have other things to use that second bedroom for. <laughs> um, paperwork. Paperwork is pretty straightforward. There's some nice guidelines. Um, I just always let people know that when you're going through paperwork, if you have a lot of shredding, and you're working with us, we'll take care of that for you. You don't have to shred every piece. We'll take large amounts for you and just get that done. And you don't have to shred everything that comes to you that has your address on it. Only if it has an account number or your social security number do you need to make sure it gets shredded. So those donation requests and um, credit card offers, you can just recycle those. Everyone has your address anyways. We have a nice handout that um, I think I'll be able to send everyone that has some guidelines for that. And I can send that to you afterwards. I mean, yeah, sure that would be great, stuff. actually. Just if it has the account number on it. Um, okay, so this is uh, kind of regarding the question that came up before about selling things, what to do with them, sell them now or later. So this is our list and kind of the order that we look at doing things in. So what to do, do with the things that you've decided to downsize and you're not keeping. The first recommendation is to check with family, friends, and possibly the buyer of your home if you're selling um, to see if anyone wants those things. Another option is an estate sale, which is kind of like a rummage sale at your home, but a professional organizes it so they have the expertise of what things are worth and what they should be sold for. And they also, a reputable company should be fully insured and provide staff to watch all the rooms in your house so that, um, that there's safety and, um, yeah, safety and rules in place to take care of your items. An estate settlement is very similar to an estate sale, but it eliminates people coming through your home. So with an estate settlement, our um, professional would come in and he would assess the items in your home and pay you up front, and then he takes them off site to sell them. And our partner also takes care of anything that needs to be uh, donated or disposed of so that there's nothing left for you to worry about. So that's, that's actually what most of our clients end up using. Um, an estate sale is great if you're leaving most of your things behind. If you're taking your favorite, most valuable things with you, there's oftentimes not actually enough left behind to warrant an estate sale on site. You need a certain volume for that. Um, consignment and auction is another um, option, especially if you have time. So if you're planning your move a year from now and you have some higher end, fancier pieces, then looking at consignment and auction is a good fit. If you're moving in the next month, there may not be the right season to consign or send things to auction um, or the timing just takes a little longer with those options and it's not going to be a huge money maker so it's up you know it's up to you either way but you can usually get something if you have time to plan for that um, garage sales and online online sales we have a question mark there that's always an option we have clients who are Die hard rummage sailors or like to sell things online. It comes with some risk, and the um, unless you've had things appraised or really know, you know, we always hear the story of somebody selling something for 50 cents and then finding out it was worth $500. So, um, 
doesn't happen every day, but you, you would hate to be one of the people who sell your treasured things for less than they were valued at. So we like to bring in uh, an expert to make sure you're getting a fair price. Then the donate option, which we talked about already, call ahead, make sure you know their current requirements. And then the last option is dispose of. So um, we, we can always talk to you about all those options and help you coordinate what's gonna work best for your, your situation. So to summarize and wrap up here, we've got a few downsizing myths, which we've touched on throughout the presentation. Uh, one downsizing myth we hear all the time is my family and friends are gonna want all the things I no longer want or need. Um, so that's kind of the backup plan. We'll move what we want and they can take the rest. Unfortunately, that doesn't usually happen. Sometimes, usually family and friends already have what they need or they have a different style or they move around and they're not collecting things like we used to. So um, we just find in general, this isn't happening um, on the regular. And if you've been saving things for 30 years for your children who are gonna pick them up someday and they haven't picked them up yet, they're probably not gonna come pick them up <laughs> before your move. So um, it's just a good time to think about those things and, and give them a final option to pick it up. And if not, then make another plan. Another myth is sometimes we think I can sell these things for a lot of money. Um, right now the market is flooded so unfortunately, things that maybe 10, 15 years ago were selling for $500, maybe now are going for $50. Um, like I said, collections aren't going for a lot. So it doesn't mean things don't sell at all. And some things do sell for a lot, but majority of things you, you're not going to get top dollar for at this point in time. Um, Another myth, and we touch on this as well, it will be easier to sort through and downsize after I move. We, we hear this a lot. Oh, I'll have so much time once I get there, I'll just look through all these boxes. <laughs> and um, we've moved people, so we've been in um, business 18 years. We moved our second ever client within the last year and those boxes she was gonna look to were still in her storage. She <laughs> She never even opened them. They were sealed and had smart moves still written on them. Oh, so the, the reality is you're moving to a great new community. You're going to be busy. You're going to be doing lots of fun things. And probably the last thing you're going to want to do is look through a pile of boxes. So um, the more you can do beforehand, the better. Most of the time, there is going to still be things to look through and go through after the move, and that's okay. You can keep doing that, and we're here to help if you, if you need help with that afterwards as well. And then the last myth is sometimes we hear people say, well, I have to do this all myself. Who else is going to know what to do and, and what I should take and not take? And I just want to reassure you, if you work with smart moves or you work with others, you should keep in mind that you are the one that needs to make the final decision. It really is up to you and others are just here to help. We can help do the physical lifting and moving. We can offer suggestions, but yes, you are the one in charge, but you don't have to do all that work yourself. So that's what we're here for. And here's our uh, final slide. This is, um, one of our clients holding her I made a smart move sign and our Aww. contact information, our website, and you can find us on Facebook as well. So if after today you think of a bunch of questions, just send them our way. Okay, that is great. So they can just, okay, so they have the number and you guys can reach um, out at, at, to, to us as well and we can forward that. Um, and then you also said you might have some, have some flyers to give, correct? Yes, so oh, I don't know. Out? Okay. If we have emails. I can send everyone some flyers through email. Okay. Well, that was helpful because uh, another question came in, but I think you covered it. Um, and this one was from Tom. What if I bring too much with me? But I saw that the slides were, I mean, the donations are a great idea. And then, you know, if you have enough energy, the rummage sales and things like that too. But um, yeah, great questions that have started. Um, and again, Melinda can help you with anything or smart moves. Um, 
I've heard wonderful reviews about them from residents that have moved here. Um, and it's all about making a smooth transition for um, everybody moving. Um, so thank you, Melinda. That was great. Um, and again, her, the, the email address is up. Um, you can find it on Smart uh, or on Facebook, and you can find um, you know Smart Moves the phone number, and we also have it as well. So thank you for that. Um, that was great. Actually, I got a couple tips from myself for that. So um, that is good. Um, and so Sally and Mike, did you? Um, how about for your experience? You've been here for about a year now, a little over a year. And um, Sally and Mike came to us from like a 3,000 square foot house, I would say. Is that correct, Sally 30, and Mike? 3,700 square feet. 3,700 square feet. Square so feet. That's, yeah, that's we a, had. That's a we, big house. Yeah, five bedrooms, um, three full bathrooms. We lived on a lake. Our frontage faced the lake, of course. Um, we had several boats that we had to get rid of. We had an RV, we had a van, we had a lot of things from three different families. My grandmother, when she died, gave her, left her things to my mother. My mother never went through them and left their things with us. And so when we decided to move here, we literally had three generations of things to go through. And uh, everything that Melinda said was true. You know, our family didn't want anything except the things that we wanted to keep. Anything else they didn't want. And um, they suggested that we have an estate sale because a lot of the things were older. And we did. We lived in East Troy in Walworth County. Uh, it's Lake Country. And we called various... Um, estate sale professionals and we had five come through the house and they all told us that they couldn't do our estate sales because we were not in an ideal location. We were too far from Madison, too far from Janesville, too far from Milwaukee and they couldn't get their regular clientele or any interested clientele that would make the trip. So they recommended that we either try and do something ourselves or to um, call an auction house. So actually, after talking with all of these different people, um, we talked with um, Katrina here at San Camillo. We talked with our realtor, and they all agreed that probably the best thing for us to do would be to call an auction house. So we called several auction houses and um, got some of the same responses. We were too far away. We, they couldn't do this. They couldn't do that. But the Beloit auction house finally said they would come in, take our boats, take our um, ramps, take the RV, take all of these things. And they came in and over two days, they emptied everything out of our house that we hadn't put in boxes marked keep and from they did this from october through february they had our items and in february they gave gave us a 12 piece piece page tally of everything that they had sold for us and it was one of the easiest things we've ever done in our life we can recommend it highly but then the other thing that um she mentioned when uh, I wish we had known about some kind of a coordination service beforehand is that don't keep anything after, after you move, really, except the things you're going to put into your apartment. We had initially thought we were going to go into a larger two-bedroom apartment in possibly into the new tower that San Camilo was building. But when we moved here, we had a choice of three of the smaller apartments for a while we were waiting. And actually, we found after several months that this was just the right size. We didn't need any more than this apartment that we had. And so now we have things left in storage 
that we're going to go into a bigger apartment and now we need help getting rid of what's left again. So um, we did have initial help. Uh, Katrina gave us five or six um, copies of floor plans that we could work out where we were going to put things. So we knew what to move here initially and you know to keep out of the things that we were going to keep you know that we thought we were going to keep mm -hmm. so it's actually worked out very well we liked the smaller apartment we saved a lot of money by not moving into the big tower and um, it's just been very very nice here we like it a lot that's great because one of the questions that came in also for you as a resident coming from a larger home, you did say, so now when you're in the two bedroom apartment or your size apartment, um, mm -hmm. you're, you're, you're saying that you are happy with that and that you um, are liking the square footage of your apartment now and there's other things to do outside of the apartment. Is that correct or? Yes. Absolutely. Well, we went down from 3,700 to 870 square feet. But when you think back on it, the main rooms we ever used in our house were the room where the TV was, sure. the porch, and the kitchen. And uh, we have a one, you know, we have our bedroom in one of the rooms. We put our TV, the desk, my sewing machine, and our sofa that you can see here in the second bedroom. And we use the bay window as our porch when we sit in the living room. So uh -huh. really we had all the places that we used in our old house we have here. And um, the only thing we don't have is are the other four bedrooms to clean. <laughs> and, you know, and our kids don't come to um, to stay like they used to, uh, but our grandchildren used to be able to stay overnight with us because the sofa is a pullout. You know, we could sleep on the sofa, uh -huh. so we have everything. Uh, the dining room downstairs we can go back to now. It's um, right. open. Yeah, uh, yeah. The uh, we have movies three times a week. We don't go to all of the movies. Um, there's everything for anyone that you want, could want. We go to mental gymnastics to keep alert. Uh, I think we're the youngest people here. <laughs> Close. Close to the youngest people here. Um, we're very active. We can go in and out. They've kept us very, very healthy. None of us here have gotten COVID. There are 350 plus people and everyone is quite happy to follow the guidelines that administration has put down because it's keeping us safe. Well, that's and, great. You know, so um, we're very, very happy with that. And we've met a lot of nice people. Um, we've met people that have the same interest we have. We've met people who don't and it, it makes for good conversation. They have their own library here. So if you don't get to the library right away, you can always get books there. It's just, it was one of the best decisions we've ever made. And I'm glad we made it. Oh, early. That's, that's nice. That's nice to hear. So, mm -hmm. yeah. So for your, for your downsizing, like for your downsizing and like all the tips that Melinda gave and everything like that, would you say Perfect. it was a pretty smooth transition? So from going to a large house to a, it was, it was okay or? Oh, it was a wonderfully smooth transition. Oh, good. Good. Um, the, the hardest part was the first six weeks while we were um, undoing backs, boxes and deciding where we were going to put this, that, and the other thing. And uh, it took them a while to find us a storage cage in the basement. Oh, sure. Once we got that, then um, things, you know, moved right along without any trouble. Well, good. I'm glad to hear that. And I'm glad to hear that you um, are enjoying your apartment but also know that you know 
San Camilla is a community where you can come down and participate in other things or eat and things like that. So that right. is great. Um, so basically for this, pre you know, for this webinar, it is nice. I feel like um, Melinda, you did a great job just giving lots of pointers about downsizing and knowing that, you know, there's companies out there like Smart Moves that would really work for people. And then it's also always nice to hear from our residents, Sally and Mike. Thank you so much for um, giving us positives that I feel like some people can feel a little bit overwhelmed from moving and um, trying to get everything gathered and what to keep, what not to keep, what will fit in the apartment. Um, and I'm glad to see that you, um, most of our residents here talk about once they downsize, they're so glad they did and they wish they yes. would have done it sooner. Yes. So it's nice to hear um, that you guys have for the last year been happy and and I and truly not missing a lot of the stuff that you gave up or or donated to the auction. So um, so for all of you out there that are listening right now, um, hopefully you got some helpful hints and you know that it can be a positive, smooth transition. Um, and San Camillus is here for you. Um, Smart Moves, Melinda's, you know, Melinda's here. Um, and you, you're always welcome to um, contact us here. And I'm sure residents would be happy to give you little pointers and, and how they are happy as well. Um, yeah. So that is good. And I feel like that is about it for our, our webinar today. I don't yeah, want to stay advantage. on too long. I'm sorry, All go I ahead. Say is take advantage of a coordinator. I take think it would be an excellent idea. That is a, a great advice, yes. So Melinda put up her information, but you can always contact us here also. Um, and again, my name is Heather and there's, um, two other senior living specialists like Katrina and Jackie. And so we're always here to help. And um, yes, if anybody has anything else, just send them along my way and I'll pass it on to Melinda. Um, and thank you very, very much, Melinda and Sally and Mike for joining us today. It was very Whoa. helpful. And um, I, I personally got a lot of tips out of it. So thank you. Thank you. All right, thanks everybody. Have a great rest of the day. Bye. 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 Bye.